Have you ever wondered why you can't catch your shadow or why you can see a rainbow? These everyday phenomena are all thanks to an incredible force that's been with us since the dawn of time, yet still holds a shroud of mystery. That force, my friends, is light. Light in its simplest form is energy that allows us to see the world around us. It's like the universe's very own magic show and it's happening all around us all the time. It's the reason we can see our favorite movie on the big screen. It's the reason we can see our friends' faces in a video chat. And it's the reason we can see the stars twinkle in the night sky. There are two main types of light sources in our world, natural and artificial. Our most prominent natural light source is the sun. It's like the universe's very own spotlight, illuminating our planet and making life possible. But what happens when the sun goes down? That's when artificial light sources come into play. These are things like light bulbs, street lamps, and even the flashlight on your phone. And let's not forget about those tiny glowing creatures that light up our summer nights, the fireflies. They are living proof that not all light sources need to be plugged into a wall. But light isn't just about seeing, it's also about feeling. It warms our skin on a sunny day, it guides us through a dark room, and it can even change our mood. Ever notice how a sunny day can lift your spirits while a cloudy day can bring you down? That's the power of light. However, light isn't all sunshine and rainbows. It has its own set of rules it likes to follow, and sometimes it even likes to break them. It's a fascinating and complex force, with properties that scientists are still working to fully understand. So, ready to embark on a journey to unravel the mystery of light? Join us as we delve into the luminous and the non-luminous, the straight path of light and its chameleon nature. Did you know that some things have their own personal spotlight while others rely on borrowed light? Quite intriguing, isn't it? This is the enchanting world of light we are exploring. Today we're going to talk about the luminous and the non-luminous, the stars of our show. Let's start with the luminous. These are the show-offs of the light world, the ones that don't need anyone else to shine. They emit their own light. For instance, think about the stars. Each star is a luminous object, a self-contained light show, burning brightly in the night sky. They're like the divas of the cosmic stage, constantly in the limelight. But what about the moon? It's bright and visible in the night sky, so it must be luminous, right? Well, not exactly. The moon is what we call a non-luminous object. It doesn't have its own light. Instead, it's a master of illusion, a magician, if you will. It borrows light from the sun and reflects it back to us, creating the illusion that it's glowing. It's like when you're at a party and there's that one friend who doesn't tell any jokes but laughs the loudest. That's the moon. It doesn't have its own light, but it sure knows how to reflect the sun's light and steal the show. So, in the grand scheme of things, everything around us falls into one of these two categories, luminous or non-luminous. The luminous ones are the original sources of light, like stars, light bulbs or fireflies. On the other hand, non-luminous objects like the moon, your favorite book or even yourself, reflect light from these sources. This fascinating interplay between the luminous and the non-luminous is what makes our world visible and vibrant. It's a cosmic dance of light where some lead and others follow. So next time you look at the moon, remember, it's just borrowing some light. Ever thought why light doesn't like to zigzag or take a detour? Well, it's not because light has a strict schedule to stick to, or because it's just plain old stubborn. It's because of one of its key properties. Light travels in a straight path. This is a fundamental aspect of how light behaves, and it's something we can observe in our everyday life. Now imagine you're in a pitch dark room. You have a flashlight in your hand. What happens when you switch it on? You see a beam of light, right? And unless you're in a house of mirrors, that beam goes straight ahead, illuminating everything in its pathway. That's light being the straight arrow that it is traveling in a straight line. The same thing happens when you look out your window on a sunny day. The sunlight that's brightening up your room isn't taking a scenic route. It's not bouncing around from object to object before it reaches you. No, it's coming straight from the sun over 93 million miles away and landing right in your room. But what happens if something gets in the way of the light, like, say, a wall? Well, the light doesn't try to bend around the wall or squeeze through the bricks. It hits the wall and stops. That's why when you put your hand in front of a flashlight, you see a shadow. The light can't go through your hand, so it stops, leaving a dark area behind. Here's a fun fact. Did you know that this straight path property of light is also why we see stars twinkling in the night sky? The light from those stars has traveled many light years in a straight line all the way to your eyes. 
Now, isn't that something to marvel at? So, in a nutshell, light loves to keep things simple and straightforward. It opts for the most direct route between two points. It's like your no-nonsense friend who, when asked for directions, will always suggest the quickest, most direct route, not caring about the scenic detours or zigzag paths. So, light is like that friend who always wants to take the quickest route. What if I told you light is a master of disguise, changing its behavior depending on who it meets? Fascinating, isn't it? Let's dive in. Imagine light as a party guest. When it comes across a black shirt, the shirt absorbs most of the light, like a guest who's a foodie, gobbling up all the appetizers. This is why we feel warmer in dark clothes on a sunny day. The shirt is absorbing light energy and converting it into heat. Now let's consider a mirror. When light meets a mirror, it's like it's meeting the life of the party, someone it can't help but bounce off. This is called reflection. The light rays hit the mirror and bounce back, which is why you can see your own charming reflection while brushing your teeth in the morning. But what happens when light meets a prism? Well, it's like meeting a mesmerizing storyteller who spins tales so captivating that the light changes its path. This phenomenon is known as refraction. When light passes from one medium to another, say from air into a glass prism, its speed changes, causing it to bend or refract. This is why we see a stunning rainbow of colors when light passes through a prism. Each color of light refracts or bends by a slightly different amount, causing the colors to spread out and form a spectrum. Light's chameleon-like behavior can be a bit mind-boggling, but it's also what makes it so intriguing. It's a key player in our daily lives. From the warmth we feel under a cozy black blanket, to the mirror selfies we love to click, and the captivating rainbows that appear after a summer shower, so light is not just bright, it's quite the social butterfly too. In the next scene, we'll uncover more about how different materials interact with our versatile friend light. Stay tuned! Ever noticed how light behaves differently when it encounters different objects and materials? Well friends, it's time to dive into the fascinating world of light and materials. Imagine you're standing in front of a mirror, admiring your reflection. The reason why you're able to do that is because metals, like the silver coating on the back of your mirror, are great at reflecting light. They bounce back almost all the light that hits them, allowing you to check if your hair is still on point. Now let's bring glass into the picture. Ever wondered why you can see through a window, but not through a wall? That's because glass, unlike most materials, allows light to pass through it. This property is known as transparency. And it's not just glass. Other materials like water and certain plastics have this property too. Speaking of water, have you ever noticed how a straw seems to bend when you put it in a glass of water? That's not because you've got magic straws, it's because water refracts, or bends, the light. When light moves from one medium, like air, to another medium with a different density, like water, it changes speed, causing it to change direction and make the straw look bent. But not all materials are as friendly with light. Some, like dark fabrics or black paper, absorb most of the light that falls on them, converting it into heat. That's why wearing a black shirt on a sunny day might turn you into a walking barbecue. Finally, let's talk about something called phosphorescence. You know those glow-in-the-dark stickers you used to stick on your ceiling to make your own starry night? They absorb light and then emit it slowly over time, creating that cool glow. So from reflections in the mirror to the bending of light in water, to glow in the dark stars, it's clear that light's behavior truly depends on the company it keeps. Did you know that not all light sources are created equal? Some are hot and some are not. Let's dive into this fascinating world of light and heat. Consider a candle. It emits both light and heat. You can see the flame and feel the warmth if you place your hand near it. But remember, safety first. Don't get too close. The light comes from the energy produced as the wax burns. This is called incandescence. Now let's switch gears and talk about a glow stick. You crack it, shake it, and voila, you've got a source of light that you can safely touch. The light from a glow stick, unlike our candle, doesn't come with a side of heat. This is because the light is produced through a chemical reaction, a process called chemiluminescence. But why does any of this matter? Well, it's crucial when thinking about energy efficiency. Light sources that produce a lot of heat, like incandescent bulbs, waste a lot of energy. That's why many people are switching to cooler, more energy-efficient light sources, like LED lights. Now let's talk about sensory organs and devices that use light. Our eyes are a perfect example. 
they capture light and convert it into signals that our brain can understand. This is what enables us to see the world around us. The retina, at the back of our eyes, is loaded with light-sensitive cells that do all the heavy lifting. Similarly, cameras are devices that use light. They capture light through a lens and use a sensor to turn that light into an image. It's like a mechanical version of our eyes. So there you have it. Light is a fascinating phenomenon that not only illuminates our world but also heats it up and helps us perceive it. It's involved in everything from the burning of a candle to the snapping of a photo. So light does not only illuminate our world but it also warms it up and helps us perceive it. Who knew light could be so fascinating and complex, right? We've journeyed together through the dazzling world of light, unveiling its mysteries and appreciating its omnipresence in our lives. We started our exploration by identifying the various natural and artificial sources of light, from the radiant sun to the humble light bulb. We then delved into distinguishing between objects and living things that emit their own light, known as luminous, and those that reflect light from other sources, the non-luminous. Our journey took us down the straight path of light, a journey that's faster than anything else in the universe. We learned that light travels in a straight line until it encounters an obstacle, which leads us to the next part of our journey. We then explored the chameleon nature of light and how it can be absorbed, reflected and refracted. We discovered that light is a master of disguise, changing its path and even its speed when it encounters different materials. Speaking of materials, we ventured into how different objects and materials interact with light energy. Some materials absorb light, turning it into heat, while others reflect or refract it, creating dazzling displays of color and form. We also distinguish between sources of light that emit both light and heat, like the sun or a candle, and those that emit light but little heat, such as a LED light. This fascinating interplay between light and heat is a testament to the diverse properties of light. And finally, we touched upon how our sensory organs, like our eyes and various devices, make use of these properties of light. From seeing colors to capturing memories in photographs, light plays an integral role in our perception of the world. So the next time you switch on a light or see a rainbow, you'll know there's more to light than meets the eye.